One of the most powerful things out there when it comes down to metabolic syndrome, so high blood glucose, insulin resistance, obesity, high blood pressure, has been around for thousands of years, but we just now have the research to really understand what a powerful compound it is. Cutting right to the chase, I'm talking about Korean red ginseng. They have compounds in them called ginsenosides. Okay, these are what give us most of the benefit. Huge adaptogenic components. When we think adaptogens, we think ashwagandha, we think maybe some chaga, we think, but we don't think about like the most basic one that's probably been around for longer than any of us can really remember, right? And talked about for ages. Now, Korean red ginseng, these roots are fully developed and contain the most amount of nutrients and antioxidants in their lifetime at age six. So capitalize on that. Then they're steam heated and then dried. Research demonstrates that this increases the effectiveness of the compounds, whereas white ginseng is just sun-dried, so you may not get that same effect. So let's get right into the nitty-gritty of how it impacts and how you can use it and how much you might want to try. 35 to 40% of adults have metabolic syndrome, okay? So it's classified, of course, as like having central adiposity, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, or high blood glucose, uh, a number of different things that are kind of in that metabolic sphere. So the first thing I want to look at is ginseng's relationship on blood pressure, because there's some interesting data there. There was a study that took a look at hypertensive rats. Okay, I know it's a rodent model, but it gives us clear data, or somewhat clear data. They found that it improved their blood pressure, possibly through what's called vasodilation. So basically by relaxing the arteries, blood was able to flow easier, thereby reducing blood pressure. Now they also found there was an interesting modulation in the genes that express what is called cyclooxygenase enzyme 2, or COX2, suggesting that there might be an inflammatory modulation effect that is affecting blood pressure as well. But maybe you've heard of an ACE inhibitor before. ACE inhibitors stand for angiotensin conversion enzyme inhibitors. Okay, so there could be an ACE inhibition effect coming from ginseng as well. But let's look at a little human data. There's a study published in Hypertensive Research that was a 12 week long study that took a look at five grams of red ginseng per day versus control. They found the subjects that had five grams of red ginseng had a six and a half point or millimeters per mercury point decrease in their systolic and a five millimeters of mercury decrease in their diastolic. So definitely something going on there. Let's move on a little bit more directly into obesity and adipose tissue, because this is something I think all of us, whether we have metabolic syndrome or not, are paying attention to. So this first study takes a look at rodents, another 12 week long study. In this case, they gave subjects either 125 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day of ginseng or 500 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, okay? What they found is that the group that had more ginseng had more weight loss, more liver weight loss, meaning the fatty liver was shrinking, okay, and they also had less overall fat in general. So the weight that they were losing was fat, not muscle. What's interesting though, I'm a mechanistic guy, I really like to know what's going on here. Researchers speculate that it has to do with an increase in PPAR, which means the cell was actually programmed to want to use fat better, also an increase in PGC1A, which means you had more energy factories in the body, so that's more sites at which you can burn fat. An increase in uncoupling proteins. Now what that means is an increase in places where energy gets dissipated as heat rather than stored. Okay? And then lastly, an increase in AMPK phosphorylation, which is basically the switch that turns on using stored fuel in the first place. Now in humans, there was a study that took a look at eight weeks of red panax ginseng, and it found that not only did subjects that took in ginseng lose weight, but they also had microbiome shifts. So researchers said, well, we wanna take this a little bit further. Let's take the people that lost the most weight against the people that didn't lose as much weight. The more weight that was lost, the larger the microbiome shift as well, which suggests that some of the stuff that's happening might be mediated by robust changes within the microbiome. So not only do we have potential biochemical cellular things going on, we have biome, microbiome things that are potentially going on, making it very fascinating. Now this channel is really big on insulin resistance and talking about how we can stave that off and improve metabolic efficiency in a lot of ways. Well, there's some clear data with ginseng that really just gets me thinking. 
So there was one study published in phytotherapy research that found that ginseng seems to upregulate gene expression associated with AMPK phosphorylation, explain that in a second, and mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay, so AMPK phosphorylation. When AMPK gets activated, that is essentially what happens when you're in a deficit. It's the switch that flips that tells your body, uh-oh, there's no more fuel. You need to start pulling fuel from muscle. You need to start pulling fuel from fat. You need to tap into reserves. It's what a lot of us want when we're losing weight. So it seems to upregulate genes associated with flipping that switch, but also seems to upregulate genes associated with creating more mitochondria. More mitochondria means more places that we can burn fat and create energy. But in addition to this, they also found there was an increase in insulin signaling. So when people consume carbohydrates, you need to have an insulin signal. If you're diabetic or insulin resistant, that signal gets weaker. But they also found there was an increase in the phosphorylation of insulin receptors, meaning the insulin receptors that actually receive the signal from insulin work better. So consuming carbohydrates, you don't want your blood sugar to just go up and stay up. You want your blood sugar to go up and then come right down because that tells you that the cell is getting the fuel that it needs. And then of course, there was also an increase in GLUT4 translocation, says, suggesting that ginseng is helping the actual cell literally soak up the glucose that it needs for fuel. But then there was another study that gets really wild that found that there might be some influence on the leptin receptors. It might actually increase the activity of the leptin receptors. Now, leptin is sort of a satiety hormone in a lot of ways. Like when leptin levels are high, it's telling our brain that like, okay, hey, there's fuel on hand, you're good, like don't need to eat. But if your leptin receptor doesn't receive a signal from leptin, then your body still thinks that you're super hungry because it never got the satiety signal, right? So in this particular case, if the leptin receptor is more you know, sensitive, then you're going to get that signal, you're gonna be more satiated and that can improve insulin resistance as well. There was a study published in the journal Diabetes Research looking at Korean red ginseng on diabetic subjects. So in diabetic subjects that had diabetes for less than five years, they saw huge improvements in their fasting insulin alongside Korean red ginseng treatment. And they also saw improvements in their HOMA IR from 3.39 down to 2.08 micro IUs per milliliter. And subjects that had diabetes for longer than five years had a significant improvement in their current perception threshold. So that means that they were having less overall sort of symptoms from insulin resistance and diabetes. He's suggesting that overall, just glycemic control is better when ginseng is in the equation at a pretty small amount. There was also a study in hypertension research that demonstrated that red Korean ginseng reduced systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure and increased nitric oxide levels. So there's that huge benefit as well. What I don't want you to do is just go to the store and pick up any kind of ginseng because there are so many different varieties. You want to be looking for Korean red ginseng, and I actually put a link down below for Korean Red Ginseng Corporation. They are the largest ginseng brand in the world, okay? And they spend $20 million a year just towards ginseng research, okay? They spend millions on R&D to make sure that ginseng is legit, okay? With every single run that they do of their ginseng, every single batch, there are over 430 different quality tests. Okay, there's not a lot of regulation in the ginseng world. So it's up to the brands to really do all of their own vetting and making sure that the product is good. And that is exactly what is awesome about Korean Red Ginseng, Korean Ginseng Corporation. So if you do use the code THOMAS15 down below, it'll save 15% off whatever you want on their website. Okay, and that link is down below in the description. But the ones I really want to feature because I think they're awesome are the Core Select. Okay, their Core Select ginseng are a little bit more isolated towards things like, okay, here's immunity ginseng. Here's going to be energy focused ginseng. Here's a women's balance ginseng that helps out in sort of an adaptogenic way uh, for women specifically. So really, really cool stuff. Now, these are made from the ginseng extract paste. So you're getting like a concentrated extract and then they make the actual drinkables and the supplements out of that. Now you don't have to just go that route, right? You can use that link and you can get any kind of ginseng paste or whatever it is that you want from their website to kind of do it however you want to do it. But kind of in that core select fashion, it seems to work really well because it's a little bit more geared towards a consumer in sort of a drinkable form. What you also have to understand about Korean red ginseng is that it's different from the other types of ginseng out there because it has so much more in the way of saponins. So if you look at Korean red ginseng, there's 32 saponins in it compared to like American, which has 
12 to 15, or some of these other ones that have like 22, like 32 saponins, giving that's the thing that's really driving the adaptogenic effect. That's what you want to lean into. So again, that link is down below, the largest ginseng brand in the world. The ones that focus on an 18-year production cycle with two years of conditioning and preparation, six years to grow, and then 10 years of soil rest, the real deal. So that link is down below. Use code THOMAS15 for anything that you want on their website down below in the description. But what about lipids? What about the fat circulating in our body? What about cholesterol? What about triglycerides? Like These are the things that your doctor is harping on you about. And Sometimes you feel like you have a grasp on it, but you don't, right? It's, it's difficult. Well, this is where ginseng has a seemingly interesting benefit as well. This is a liver study publishing complementary therapies in medicine, taking a look at liver damage from a medication called cyclophosphamide. So they compared Korean red ginseng to vitamin E, and they found that ginseng was more potent at hepatoprotection, protecting the liver, and really should be considered wherever liver damage might be expected secondary to using medications. The way this is happening is speculated to be because of the increases in CD36 and PPAR-alpha. CD36 is a fatty acid transporter. So you need CD36 to get fats out of the bloodstream and into a cell to ultimately be burned. If you can transport fats out of the bloodstream better, think about it. That makes sense. That's going to help triglycerides. That ultimately is going to help lipid profiles. That is a good thing. Okay. And then the increase in PPAR-alpha, or the activation of PPAR-alpha, makes it so that those fats that are getting transported can actually be used as fuel better. But what about stopping fat building? You see, lipogenesis is something very interesting. We think about lipolysis, the burning of fat, but lipogenesis is equally important because that's building fat. So what good is lipolysis if we don't stop lipogenesis? So it seems as though ginseng does a good job of kind of stopping or slowing down the genes that are associated with lipogenesis. So we actually might stop sort of the formation of fat. Now, one of the first places that this occurs is at the liver level. When we start gaining weight or we start storing fuel from extra fats, extra carbs, extra fructose, whatever, a lot of times it does rear its ugly head in the form of a fatty liver. So a lot of people are looking for solutions for that. There was a study that took a look at 80 patients, okay, for eight weeks, okay, and they gave them Korean red ginseng or a placebo. These patients all had a fatty liver, humans. They found that their AST and their ALT levels decreased significantly, so the liver wasn't as stressed. A fatty liver is typically stressed and not functioning as well. They also found there was a decrease in tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is an inflammatory cytokine, at the liver level. So there was less inflammation happening at the liver. And then there was an increase in adiponectin, which in this case is something that we want to see. We want to, like, more circulating adiponectin is telling us that we're ultimately going to be burning fat. So, or we're at least utilizing that fuel. So definitely something we want to be paying attention to. So then what do we do? How much do we take? When do we use it? What we have to remember is that ginseng is an adaptogen. So my recommendation with ginseng is take it to adapt to a stressor. Taking it before a workout, taking it maybe when you're starting to feel sick, because what it's going to do is it's going to allow your body to adapt to its scenario that it's in. For example, working out is something that you adapt to. Your adaptation is getting stronger. Okay, endurance work, you go for a long run and you push your boundaries a little bit to get stronger. Adaptogenic compounds help you get stronger with that. So yes, ginseng is something that you take every day if you want to, but what I really suggest is taking a little bit more when you're gonna push the boundaries or take a little bit more when you're feeling like you're getting sick. Now, this is just me suggesting this, but with adaptogens, that's how they work and the things we have to pay attention to. So again, it just makes a lot of sense to factor all the equations in. And again, the thing I like about Korean Ginseng Corporation is that it factors all this different stuff in. Okay, having compounds that are dedicated more towards immunity, more towards stamina, more towards just overall energy. Really interesting stuff. So at the end of the day, ginseng is probably one of the most powerful things you can be taking that's not going to keep you up all night and keep you jittery and stimulated. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out Korean Ginseng Corporation down below in the description.